shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you see darkness covers the earth and thick darkness is over the people but the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn thanks so much Joyce and that's amazing great I'd love you to think about oh well done Tilly oh, well done uh, I'd love you to think on your tables for just a moment. What is the best gift you can imagine? Okay, just for 30 seconds, what is the best gift you can imagine? Uh, just for two seconds, chat on your tables. Okay, okay, what, were some of the, what would be the best gift on, on this table? What do we think? Sl a full night's sleep. Anyone up for that? Yeah. Okay. Any any others? Sleep. Yeah. What about this table over here? What do you What did you guys say? Said raise the poor up. Raise up the poor. That's a, that's a good one. Yeah. What what what? Yeah. What do you think? Jesus. Jesus. Well done. Very good. I think. Although, I also heard a puppy on your table. So. And money. Money, a puppy, and Jesus. Okay, yeah, what about you guys? We said land and Haribo Tangfastics. Oh, like Tangfastics. Anyone up for that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what about this table? What, what was your best gift? We said cheese. Oh, cheese. Kind of mispronounced. We meant Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, okay. Yeah, what about, what about you guys? What did you say? Yours, holiday. Oh, holiday. Anyone fancy a holiday for Christmas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about you guys? Best gift? Happiness and God. Happiness and God. We like that. Yeah. Life. Life. Yeah, we like that. What about you guys? Love. 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 Oh, bit of, bit of love for Christmas. Anyone planning to watch Love Actually? Yeah. Oh, okay, three people in the room. What about you guys? Oh, you, I've already done What about you guys? Family time and a VR headset. Oh, no, not me. You want a puppy too. Well, we've had some really, really good things. Now, one thing about, one thing about, um, about those gifts is sometimes they need waiting for, don't they? Now, what if I told you that to wait for your best gift was going to take 400 years. 400 years. Imagine waiting for love for 400 years. You'll be as old as Laura. 400 years. Can you imagine? You would think, oh no, what's going on? Now, if you had to wait for the most precious gift for 400 years, you would think that things were kind of dark and gloomy, and you'd be wondering, what on earth is going on? Now, uh, I don't know about you, but some of this time of year is my favorite time of the year. Anyone love this time of year? Yeah, a few of us. And if I were to ask you about why this was your favorite time of year, some of you might say, oh, well, I feel all really, really Christmassy. Anyone starting to feel Christmassy? Yeah, a few of us. Some might say we love it because it's really cold and when it's bright and sunshine, it's amazing. Some might say it's good to have like all the fairy lights out in your house and you can light candles and if you're Welsh, you can all kind of cutch up and like be all cuddly and warm. Anyone, is that your favorite bit? Yeah, definitely in our house. 
Now, some of us might go, oh, this is the worst time of the year because it's dark and it's gloomy and it's always rainy and we're cold and we've got to put the heating on and we've got to walk around and put, uh, put things on and it's dark. It's dark. Now, something about being dark is when it's dark, it's really hard to see unless someone puts a light on. Unless someone puts a light on. And when we put the lights on, it dispels all the gloom. It gets rid of the darkness. Even if one light was in the room, it kind of pushes the darkness away. So that's what we're going to think about this afternoon, is the light pushing out the darkness, the glory of God coming, and the nations being attracted to what God has to bring. So firstly, the light in the darkness. That's why we have a, a candle in the mirror, middle of our Christ Ingles that we're going to talk about in the moment. The light shining in the darkness. The second is the glory of the Lord coming. Now, when we think about the glory of the Lord coming, it's like this weight. It's this anticipation. It's like him saying, I'm in the room. Now, has anyone ever felt that when we've been singing Christmas carols, where you're like, oh, there's like the magic of Christmas? Anyone ever felt that? Yeah. That's called the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit comes and reminds us and shows us who Jesus is. The glory of God comes and dwells within us when uh, we sing those carols, when we think about Jesus, because he wants to draw us to the light of Christ. And the third thing that we see in this passage, when they talk about arise, shine, for your light has come, and the nations will be drawn to you. Now, Jesus talks about something called a city on a hill cannot be hidden. It's like light on a hill cannot be hidden. Now, just like when all the dark, when the lights were turned off and you could see that light shining that I was holding, even from the darkest points. See, Jesus says to us, I want you to be the light in the darkness too. A bit like those lights we have around our Christmas tree or the lights in the town centers that we see. It's like people are drawn to that light. And that's what Christmas is all about for Christians. We're drawn to the light of Jesus. And then we, as those who have received Jesus, give light to the rest of the world. So guess what your task, your homework for today is? To go and be a light into the dark places of Telford. See, the rise, shine for your light has come was to a city. It was not to a person. It was to a city. And so our task as the people of Telford is to be a shining light, to be a shining light to push out the darkness, to see the glory of the Lord come and dwell among us. And thirdly, so that all people can be included in what he has to bring. Amen? Amen. Great. We're going to have some worship in a little bit. So if you're able, we're going to stand again and sing. Oh, man, do take your seats for just a moment. Now, something to think about sharing the light of Jesus around Telford. Uh, we're going to need a friend of mine to help us. Now, this friend of mine is called Colin. So, uh, and he is a giant orange. So, but I don't know if he can hear us. I don't think there are any giant oranges in the room. So, we're going to need your help to call for Colin the Christingle. Okay, so are you ready? Three, two, one, Colin! Okay, that was a little bit naff. Shall we try that again? Three, two, one, Colin! Oh, do you know what? I think we can up it a pitch. Ready? Three, two, one, Colin! Okay, now all the cats of Lawley are going to be coming, apart from Colin. So let's take it down to semitones. Three, two, one. Colin. Oh, 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 I can see a big orange friend. Come on in, Colin. 
Come on, Colin. It's so good to see you. Come and assume the position, Colin. Well done. Now, Colin, I think um, you were more rotund this year than last year. Have you been eating all the Chris Ingalls? Yeah. There we go. Well done. Well done. Okay, now, some of you might be thinking, what on earth is Colin doing here? Has anyone ever seen such a large orange man? Maybe some of you saw Colin last year. Uh, Colin has been hiding in a cupboard all year, waiting for this moment. Now, can anyone tell me why there is a giant orange here? What does a giant orange represent within our Chris Dingles? Any ideas? Yeah, at the back. What does a giant orange represent? The world. The world. Very, very good. Now, anyone thought, okay, like, maybe I'm not the best geography student in the world, but why is it orange? Why is it orange? Yeah, I don't think there's an actual answer for this one, but we're going to go for it. Got it. It's because um, it's round. It's because it's round. That's what we like. And oranges come from other places in the world, not just here in the UK. Now, if you have a look at your Christingle, you will notice something that goes around the orange that might be red. Okay, so what is the, what is the red thing around the middle of the Christingle represent? What do you think? What do we think? Huh? What do we think of the red bit around the middle of... The oranges. Jesus' blood. Jesus' blood. Well done. We've got the Sunday school answer. Well done. Good stuff. Any, any other ideas? The equator. Ooh, we like that. It's very, very good. It is the right answer, by the way. So, Colin, if you hold on to that. And now go on, pirouette. Well done. Very dainty. You can hold the microphone now. Okay, there we go. So we have got the equator represented by this red ribbon that counts for the blood of Jesus given to everyone in the world who puts their trust in him, which is very, very good, isn't it? So uh, what might we be missing? The candle, okay? Well, come to, how about we do the candle last? Okay, these weird sticky things. The cocktail sticks. Okay, anyone know what the cocktail sticks represent? Okay, there are four of them stuck onto a world. What could that possibly represent? I'll, go, I'll come back to you in a bit. The seasons? The seasons. Do we agree? No, what do you think? The people. The people, yeah, okay. Definitely the four seasons. Okay, what, what are the four seasons? Go on, what, what should we do the first one? Summer, okay, great. Well done, we know one of the four seasons. What's the next one? Sp spring. Autumn. And winter. Oh, very good. Now, we've got the four sticks, but there are things on top of them. Some sweets. What do we think about the sweets on top of them? What could they represent? Do you guys know? No, you're looking terrified. I won't go to you. Go on, what do you guys think? What do you think the, the sweets might represent? The people. The people, okay, yeah. God. God's gift. God's gifts, yeah. Anyone know what the God's gifts might be? The fruits. The fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Oh. Okay, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness. Good, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. Have, have, we, have we got any of those? Yeah. Well done, Colin. That, that's good. So the fruits of the Spirit that are stuck on to the ends of those. And then, of course, we've got one more thing, don't we? The candle. We thought we wouldn't set Colin on fire, so we've got. So, 
So we've got the candle on the top. Okay, does anyone know what the candle might represent? Any ideas? Yeah. Oh, let me go here first. Go on, what do you think the candle represents? Jesus. Jesus. Very good. Why, why, why? So the candle represents Jesus. Why do we have the candle, though? Because it's Jesus' light guiding us. Amazing. Jesus is the light that guides us. So we've got the orange that represents the world, everybody in it. Doesn't matter where they're from or, or, or where they live, God knows them and loves them and has put his blood across the world to save us from sin, to draw us into a relationship with himself. All the things come from God, the four seasons. And then, of course, the gifts that he gives us, the gifts of the Spirit, and then, of course, the light of Christ, which goes into all the world that draws people to himself. Shall we give Colin a hand? Well then, Colin, just, just for laughs, you want to give us a twirl?